Greetings and salutations, my lovely little bitelings. My name is Wigglesby, but you can call me Wiggy because we're all friends here. So, with the recent cancellation of Bless Online in the West and the fact that Revelation Online bombed hard, we're left with a slightly more uncertain future with regards to MMORPGs. With both of the big Eastern MMORPGs being off the radar now, that doesn't leave a lot in terms of upcoming MMORPGs to be excited for. Nevertheless, together we shall press on through these uncertain waters and find some MMORPGs to actually look forward to this year, Damn it, Because there are some good ones out there, I promise. Yes, we will be listing expansions here as well. Why? Because every time we make a top 10, why didn't you include upcoming expansions in the list? So here we are. Before we get into this list though, please take a moment and answer this simple question. What MMORPGs are you, personally, most looking forward to this year? Let me know in the comment section below. One of, if not the most popular expansion for an MMORPG this year, Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. The second expansion for the MMORPG Titan Stormblood takes you to new lands, bringing in a new class and further increases the scale people had grown accustomed to. I mean Stormblood is adding swimming, diving, underwater mounts, a new primal, dungeons, raids, gear, a new residential district, a new red mage and samurai class. I mean, you get the point. Final Fantasy XIV is definitely worth getting into at this point with the insane influx of new players if you haven't already. So Pathion is a little different. I'm sorry in advance for my bluntness, but it's not a visually stunning MMORPG. Nor is the action combat exceptional. And that is perfectly fine. Pathion doesn't need to, nor does it pride itself on its intuitive combat or visuals. Instead, Pathion is attempting to create a solid MMORPG that goes above and beyond the traditional pretty MMORPGs. Being toted as an intensely social, open, sandbox MMORPG where every action and interaction is meaningful and has purpose to simulate a real world environment. Whether or not that pans out well remains to be seen, but nevertheless, it sounds like it could be a very fun aspect of the game. An MMORPG completely about and revolving around endgame. Yes, strangely, unlike most MMORPGs, you don't have to grind up from the ground up. You essentially begin the game fully loaded with everything you'll need to begin dominating the game world. One thing Western MMORPGs seem to be targeting lately is the whole player-driven economy system. A system where the entire economy of the game is based solely around the player base. Which, if you think about it, seems fantastic. Until the population continues to dry up. Upon which it becomes much more of a burden. Crowfall is attempting to be an MMORPG Game of Thrones with regards to its detailed political system where players are given the opportunity to form alliances, gain ownerships of territories, and essentially win the throne itself. Crowfall is ambitious, and if it pays off, then it could be one of the most entertaining MMORPGs out there. If you've been living under a rock, then allow me to elaborate on what Ashes of Creation is. Literally, the most hyped MMORPG of the year. Ashes of Creation is the MMORPG that the entire genre is betting on to save it. Having raised over $3.2 million in fan funding proves that there's quite a few people anticipating it. Once again, Ashes of Creation is utilizing the player-driven economy aspect of the game. I feel as though personally, this can potentially make for a lot of problems in the future, but nevertheless, it's a feature that a lot of MMORPGs are using now. In Ashes of Creation, the world grows and changes alongside you. This is a feature I'm really interested in, but at the same time, this could be an absolute disaster. Allow me to elaborate. You, as a player, have the ability to build up the world around you. However, as you are capable of building it up, other players are capable of tearing it down. So in theory, you are able to both attack people's homes, people's bases, all the while defending your own. Sound cool? Of course it does. 
but there are downsides to that as well. While Ashes of Creation has some amazing features like player housing, an ever-growing world, huge PvP such as castle sieges and more, and it very well could be an absolutely groundbreaking MMORPG. We have to be careful not to kill it with hype. Another large expansion for another large MMORPG, an absolute personal favorite of mine, having loved The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind more than any other RPG ever in my entire life. So getting the ability to go back to The Elder Scrolls Online is an absolute treat. The Morrowind expansion adds a new class, Warden, along with the traditional Vardenfell continent, new towns, characters, 4v4v4 battlegrounds. Bartonville also happens to be the largest zone in all of the Elder Scrolls Online, which is awesome, considering how much content they're no doubt going to have to cram into it, if it hopes to live up to the original Morrowind game. Although not a traditional MMORPG in the sense of the word, Lost Ark nevertheless looks absolutely freaking amazing. Not an insane amount of information is known about Lost Ark yet, but from what I can see and tell, it is more or less similar to Diablo. Although unlike most clones, Lost Ark looks incredibly well done. Lost Ark has a very strong PvP component, with varying types of arenas, both large scale battles, small scale skirmishes, or guild wars. The only anime MMORPG on this list, surprisingly. Lots of new information has been released on Period Chronos this past 6 months, and it has excited me to no end. Being a huge anime fan, this MMORPG right here is up my alley. Really far up there. Some of you guys may hate it, but it's one of the best looking MMORPGs for me. No joke. But all biased aside, Period Chronicles looks like the spiritual successor to Mabinogi. It's a strange MMORPG for sure, offering players the ability to craft their own maps, towns, quests, and cutscenes, which can then be added to the main game and enjoyed by the whole community. Period Chronicles offers a unique card battle system, along with the ability to fight with and team monsters, providing what is probably the most unique combat system in any MMORPG in this list. Before I end this list, I would like to mention some MMORPGs that aren't as hyped or talked about as some of the other games listed above that still has a large amount of people actually looking forward to them being released. This MMORPG, much like the other western games I've listed, is a socially driven MMORPG with a player driven economy. Chronicles of Illyria takes a new approach to how you progress through the game. Whilst it is a sandbox, like Black Desert, allowing you to freely do whatever it is you want, when you want to do it. But there's a catch. Your character in Chronicles of Illyria doesn't just level up like in more traditional and more RPGs, but it also ages and will, given enough time, eventually die. Which is a rarely found feature, if used at all, in non-MMORPG titles, let alone an actual MMORPG. But death isn't the end for your journey in Chronicles of Illyria, as you can have a child before your premature demise. Said child inherits everything you've gathered over your long or short lifespan. Whether or not it keeps your levels or skills remains to be seen, however. Chronicles of Illyria is taking a bold step towards an MMORPG that actually feels alive. And that is but one of the many reasons why so many people are looking forward to it. Granted, not as many as some of the other MMORPGs on this list, thus the reason it's an honorable mention. But plenty enough nevertheless. There sure is a lot of Western MMORPGs coming out, isn't there? Which I am perfectly happy with, as we'll finally get a chance to play whatever class we want without having to worry about gender locks. Moving on to what Albion Online is all about, or at least a brief summary. So it's an open sandbox MMORPG, created in the image of uh, older MMORPGs that you may have heard of, or even played, like Ultima Online or Mortal Online. 
Much like the other MMORPGs on this list, Albion Online once again has a player-driven economy. Albion also boasts having an in-depth crafting system, open-world PvP, player housing, or if one house isn't good enough for you guys, build a city. But be warned, as other guilds may try to take it from you. And lastly, no actual classes. As you can wield any weapon or equip any armor, you get to choose what your character is and how it plays. Sounds fun, right? Sure does. I'm sure I may have missed one or two, but at least currently, I believe these are the MMORPGs with the most potential, the MMORPGs with the least chance of failing, the MMORPGs with the highest chance of actually being good and not ending in the dumpster. So if you're looking forward to an MMORPG, or you want to look forward to an MMORPG, hopefully one of these MMORPGs are in your list. Thank you all for watching, and as always, good day, night, or afternoon, wherever it is where you are. And I will see you guys in the next video. We fall out of love like shooting stars, came crashing down, and we're building back up again now. I see your heart, see your mind, see all you hide. I won't let you go, can't let this die, when you lose yourself.